Well, the process for autopilot, I mean, if you want to really start from the beginning, goes all the way back to like 2004 when I told myself that I would one day produce a project of my own. And I always held on to that want to do that. And, you know, fast forward, you know, well, not fast forward, but I was always around Blueprint. I was, you know, around Blockhead, you know, RJD2, like LP, like all of these producers. I always, you know, DJ Prism, my man here, Ill Poetic, a lot of the, um, my man Aaron Evans, you know, like a lot of these people that I was around watching them produce. And I always had an affinity for music. Um, I played saxophone when I was in um, middle school and high school. So I was always in the jazz and, you know, especially once, you know, hip hop came around to more of the jazz era, you know, when they were sampling a lot more jazz, like I would recognize those records and, oh, that's a sample from, you know, so-and-so. That's a sample from here. That's a sample from there. So, you know, I was always into that side of the music, but um, the equipment, looked a little daunting to me it was it looked like it was way too much for me to try to learn in order just to get you know a beat out and i i had fr i was friends with all the best producers in the city you know and you know and in underground hip-hop to you know to be exact a lot of times so i didn't really want for beats but it was always something in the back of my head that i would try one day and um about six years ago i was out on tour with my DJ Bombay, who uh, did cuts on the album for one of the songs, uh, Pickpocket. And um, he's a producer as well. And, you know, we're after the show, we're in our room, and he goes into his bag and pulls out his whole computer setup. You know, he had his monitor, he had his computer, he had his everything. And I'm like, what are you about to do? And he's like, yo, I'm about to make some beats. So I'm sitting there watching him, and I'm like, yo, show me how to do that. Because I didn't realize you know, how far it had come. All I remember is MPCs and, you know, ASR 10s and things of that nature. I hadn't yet seen, you know, beat making on a computer yet. So, you know, he showed me, I made my first beat that night and it stuck. It was horrible. <laughs> but, you know, just, the, just digging into that kind of gave me the unction to, well, now that it's you know it seems like something i can grasp because you know i know computers i i'm a um i'm a systems analyst you know for work so i know computers and so like i can dive into this so after that um i had already had a you know recording set up at home because i used cubase to record um at the time but i hadn't used it for anything else but just recording my own vocals and I went in and used that and made my first couple beats and was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. And um, then I got um, FL Studio and just took off from there. Um, so diving into FL Studio about five years ago, um, a lot of these beats that are on autopilot are some of the earlier beats that I've made. Um, probably in the first year or two, you know, a lot of these beats are beats from that batch. And in that process, I, in that time, I was just experimenting, you know what I'm saying? Just trying different things, learning about reverb, you know, spending hours online looking at tutorials, you know, trying to get, you know, how does, you know, you get your drums to sound like a drum break when it's not a drum break? Like, what kind of things do you do? What is reverb? What is delay? Like, what actually does it do? What does it actually do to the wave file, you know, when you put it into the system, like learning the depth? and how deep production got as well as mixing and engineering and all of those things so it was really exciting um for me and you know a lot of this album is just a lot of experimentation um and i always liked weird shit so <laughs> you know it was a lot easier to you know take that route but a lot of this album was just a lot of experimentation and a lot of you know trial and error um and finding beats that I could finally hear my own voice over because I made a lot of beats, you know, before I even started recording to my own production because it was weird. I was so used to, you know, having beats from other people. Um, but, you know, once I wrote my first song to one of my own beats, I was, I was off to the races from there, you know, like it felt so comfortable. Um, and it was, it was crazy. Like I was telling this story, um, this other interview that I did, um, there was one time that I recorded a song to one of my beats. And, you know, after I recorded it, I was like, oh, I don't like how, you know, 
that, you know, it, the beat should drop out right there. Or this should happen to the beat right there. And then, you know, I took a step back and I thought like, hold on, like I made this, you know what I'm saying? Like I can drop the beat out. I can do whatever I want. You know, I can, I can turn this into whatever I want. I can make the backdrop fit whatever I needed to fit. Um, so once I had that realization and that light bulb went off, there's nothing, I, I mean, like, you'll have a hard time getting me to make an album over someone else's production going forward now, just because I'm so excited about my own. You know, I just want everybody to check out the album and, you know, let me know what they think. And, you know, I hope it's as edifying to you listening to it as it was for me making it. Um, you know, just be on the lookout. I have a lot of projects coming um, as far as production. Um, I, I'm producing a project with uh, Curly Castro from um, Wrecking Crew. I have a second Lucid Logic album that I'm producing um, coming out. Um, just a lot of, you know, work doing more videos and, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, I just got a whole lot coming. So check out IamAlogic.com um, to, you know, stay up on that.